Hey folks, this is Kalani. The special new PvE event that was teased after the mixed reception to Plunderstorm has finally been revealed, and from what we know so far, this event could be one of the best updates we've had to the game in a while. During the Pandaria Remix event, we'll be able to level up super quickly with up to, or maybe even more than, a 324% bonus experience buff, create characters with unlimited power progression, and collect a whole bunch of new rewards like unique transmog and mounts to bring over to retail. We also have a lot more information about what else will be coming with patch 10.2.7, so we have a clearer picture of what the last content patch for Dragonfly is going to include. Now before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. Let's kick things off by going over this new PvE event coming in patch 1027. We're heading back to the Mists of Pandaria expansion with some interesting twists, like massively sped up leveling, all of the expansion's content available at once, new gearing options including special abilities that make your characters way more powerful than they would usually be, an account-wide progression that lets your alts carry over some of your power bonuses to make leveling them even faster. There are also a whole bunch of cosmetic items to collect and earn including 32 mounts and some special achievements. That sounds like a lot, so let's break it down a bit further and see how this event is going to progress. So the event is going to be available to everyone with an active subscription, so just like Plunderstorm, you don't have to have any progress in retail or classic, or have a leveled up character anywhere to jump into this crazy new mode. It's going to be open to everyone. To take part in the event, you will need to make a new character. That new character will start at level 10 on the Timeless Isle, which will probably act as something of a tutorial. Then you jump straight into the fun. The blue post explains that pretty much all content from the Mists of Pandaria expansion will be available, so quests and questing areas, scenarios, dungeons, raids, the new patch zones and storylines, all of it, all at once. As you level up you'll gain access to new areas and content, and they actually provided us with a table, so you can see right when you start out at level 10 we'll be questing through the Jade Forest, but you will also be able to do a few scenarios or jump into some dungeons straight away as well if that's what you would prefer. As you progress through the levels, more stuff unlocks for you to explore. Raids are going to open up as early as level 25, which is very interesting, and there are heroic raids down at the very bottom at level 70. Now leveling from 10 to 70 again might sound like a bit of a chore, but this mode promises to be different. We don't have any rough estimations or numbers related to how much faster leveling will be in the event, but I think it's safe to say with it being a key part of the event, we are going to be leveling very quickly. Our character power is also going to change how you progress. Apparently we're going to be able to get powerful items from everywhere including quests, chests, creatures and bosses, so everything will be worth taking part in, and you should be able to get some huge upgrades just from playing through the event. The progression is also uncapped, meaning we should be able to just get more and more powerful the more you play without any limits being imposed on stats or character power. Gear is also going to have special sockets, and you can collect spell gems to slot into them, giving you even more power and letting you experiment with new abilities and builds. These spells seem kind of broken as well, so this isn't just some small little passive, they're gonna let you do some crazy stuff. I imagine if you get powerful enough, you might be able to solo dungeons and maybe even raids eventually. For example, Lifestorm causes you to call down lightning bolts, dealing damage to enemies within 30 yards. It also has a heal component and a big haste buff. Thundering Orb lets you turn into a massive AoE, dealing damage to enemies within 30 yards. Oblivion Spear is a huge crit damage debuff and a large AoE explosion. Hailstorm lets you build up stacks that unleash on targets within 50 yards. So some of these are some huge AoE abilities and provide stacks of movement speed and damage dealt debuffs. And it's not just damage abilities too. You can get gems that let you use blink, sprint, or roll as any class, so everyone will be able to move faster if you can find the right gems. These are just some early examples too, but they definitely seem to be on the right track. This kind of event works best when you let people go crazy, really up the power levels, but perhaps the coolest item we have to preview is the Cloak of Infinite Potential. This is an artifact cloak that gains permanent power as you play, and the power level is transferred to your alts as well. So if you start up a new character, your cloak will be just as powerful as your most powerful character, at least if I'm reading that right, which will let you level 
travel even faster on that new tune. The cloak is going to provide you with a big increase to every stat, including leech, and a huge experience buff as well. The example given has it at a crazy 324% bonus experience, so the more you power up this cloak, the faster you're going to level as well. Now I am very curious to see how the increased pace actually works out. Some of these abilities seem powerful enough to let us run into a camp of quest mobs, one shot everything and instantly turn around to hand in the quests. That sounds like a blast, especially if you get some movement speed boosts to just run from camp to camp destroying everything in your wake. But if everyone is doing that, I wonder if we'll end up waiting around for mob respawns quite a lot. Hopefully they adjust things as needed, but either way our characters are going to be very powerful in this new game mode. Now the most important part of this event is that unlike Plunderstorm, where your character was entirely separate and remained that way, when the Mists of Pandaria Remix event ends, your event characters will transfer over to Retail Realms and become Retail characters, so you can take them into the war with an expansion along with all of your hard-earned rewards. So you can use the event to get some characters ready for the next expansion, level up some ults, earn a lot of cosmetics along the way, but perhaps most importantly, actually have fun getting those ults leveled up. It's also going to be great for anyone who hasn't really played retail before. The leveling up sequence from 1 to 60 especially can be quite confusing, even with chromie time trying to guide you through. It's also a huge investment of time and effort to catch up with the rest of the players at max level. This event kind of avoids that problem. You can quickly level up in a unique way, check out one of the old expansions in its entirety, get a feel for what an expansion progression can be like, and then when the event is done you're all ready to hop into the war within with everyone else. It's a great idea in my opinion. So this event could be one of the best leveling up events we've seen so far in WoW, but even if you don't need to level up any characters right now, there are a huge number of rewards you can pick up. To start with, there are 32 new mounts coming with this event, mostly recolors of rare, unique, or unobtainable mounts. If you can think of any cool Mrs. Pandaria mount, chances are they have a recolor in this event. We've got Golden Cloud Serpents, New Cranes, Disc Mounts, Riding Goats, Siege of Ogremore mounts like the Juggernaut, Phoenix Recolors, Yaks, and Windsteeds. There are a lot of mounts to collect, and that's the ones we know about so far. They could add in a lot more by the time the event goes live. There are also various meta achievements, but this time they're actually flexible achievements. Each zone has a meta achievement, so very similar to what was just added for Dragonflight, except instead of completing everything on the list, you only need to complete a few options. So for example, two out of four for the Jade Forest. This lets you complete the meta achievements without being forced into areas of the game that you might not enjoy. There are various cool rewards on offer from these big achievements, like Chen Storm Stout's Bamboo Hat and Keg, the Half Hill Farmer's Bat backpack with a chicken on top and that golden cloud serpent that we saw earlier. On top of all of that, there's also going to be a new currency called Bronze, which can be used to buy upgrades in account-bound cosmetics. We don't know all of the ways we're going to acquire Bronze, but we do know that any gear drops you can get can be converted into Bronze. So whenever you get a new piece of gear, you'll either equip it as an upgrade and convert your old piece into Bronze, or if the new item is not an upgrade, you just convert it straight into Bronze. So all items, even bad items, will have value in this new event and allow you to unlock other goodies and and rewards. There is so much going on in this event, honestly it's kind of surprising. Plunderstorm was special in that it was an entirely new kind of game mode and it was kept secret right up until launch. When the dev team said they had a new special PvE event coming through, I thought it would be about the same level or amount of content, but this event seems much larger with a much wider scope. It should also appeal to a lot more players with it being mainly PvE focused, and you have everything from leveling up, transmog and mount collecting and even raiding. I am super excited to see how this event turns out. From the preview that we have, it sounds like it might play somewhat like the Season of Discovery, except instead of Classic WoW as a baseline, it has Retail as the baseline, and Mists of Pandaria as the backdrop or the setting. We're progressing through old content, but in a new way, just like Season of Discovery, with new abilities and options. 
The other major difference would be that there's no time gating of content, no waiting for the next phase to unlock. Everything is there and ready for you to jump in at your convenience. This is going to be a really fun test and I'm glad the dev team are trying new and totally different gameplay options. So that's a lot of information to digest, but the real test will be when we can get some hands-on gameplay of the event to see how it progresses and how it actually plays. Patch 10.2.7 is already up on the PTR, but the event is not currently available for testing. There's going to be a dedicated testing window starting on Friday that will be open over the weekend, so we won't have too much longer to wait to see how this event works in practice. We'll be sure to upload a video going over the event properly after we've been able to poke around a bit, so stay tuned for that. Now, while the event is certainly going to make up a big chunk of patch 1027, that's not the only thing in this patch. We have new heritage armor sets coming in for the Draenei and Troll races, so we'll have new story content to work through to unlock those. The looking for group system is getting an overhaul to let you better filter and sort groups that you're wanting to join. The hunter pet stable is getting overhauled with new options and functionality. There are new story quests that push the Dragonflight narrative forward and set the stage for the War Within, and all the quests that were previously locked behind renowned levels in Dragonflight are going to be available for everyone, even if you haven't touched Dragonflight reputation or renown. And we can expect to see quite a few class balance tuning changes as well. All of that is just in the very first build of the PTR, so 1027 is already shaping up to be quite a large content patch with plenty to do to keep us busy until the War Within pre-patch. Now remember that patch 1027 is not the same as Season 4. Season 4 will go live on April 23rd, and then 1027 will go live sometime afterwards. I expect we are probably looking somewhere around four to six weeks after season four starts. It all just kind of depends on how polished the event is and how the rest of the patch plays. The time running event is definitely a big part of 1027, but that's not the only new content we have to look forward to, so everything will need to be ready to ship before the patch can go live. But that's everything we know about the new Pandemonium event in patch 1027, so that's it for this video. What do you think from what you've seen so far? Does this leveling and PvE event look more interesting when compared to Plunderstorm? And how do you feel about more time-limited events being introduced? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members who are on YouTube. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every video with a special shout out at the start of the next video, you can find links in the description over to Patreon or click the join button just below this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.